Hi everyone, my name is Riley Beck. I am currently a junior at Texas a and University majoring in agricultural economics with a emphasis in food marketing systems. And I'm taking this class as one of my directed non-agricultural economics electives. Um, so I was involved in the group, the Native Pollinator Host Plant Survey, Lick Creek Park number two. The group consisted of 10 members. The members were myself, Blaine Bezetsny, Pedro Beltran, Bang Ho Cho, Oliver Davis, Karen Martin, Kimberly Martinez, Jennifer Sanchez Alarcon, Zachary Sterling, and Madison Vincent. Our mission was to explore the park and desire to locate and identify pollinator plants and milkweed plants that were present in the Lick Creek Park environment. So we wanted to do our best to find as many of the different types of plants that are pollinators and to locate exactly where the plant was found. So we decided the most appropriate way to find and identify the plants would be to have all of us go at different times or to have a small group of maybe like two or three people at a time and um, walk the trails of the park. So after the plants were located and pictures were taken, the pictures were uploaded onto a Google document so that the plants could be identified. So it was fun to collaborate with all of the partners. It was quite difficult at times because we all had very different schedules with school, work, and even family. So like I stated earlier, we wanted to gather as many pollinator plants and milkweed plants as we could so that we could determine if Lit Creek Park was an adequate place for monarch butterflies to pollinate. So we collectively made a Google document online that was functionable for all members of the project to access um, at any time. And we also communicated via GroupMe and that proved to be a very fast, efficient and effective way um, of communicating with all of the group members. So the group and I decided to find our own time to go out and gather pictures and the locations of the plants on the different trails. Um, the trails were distinguished by the park itself, so the most accurate way to map um, where we located the plants was to use the name of the specific trail. So we wanted to walk around different trails, but due to, you know, weather, things like snakes and other dangers, and I know even um, on a couple of the trails, uh, they were kind of blocked off due to like construction and things like that. So we just tried to go to the trails that were the most um, easily accessible. Okay, all members did attend the park. We decided that the most effective way to gather the plants would be for a few of us to go um, walk around the park and gather the pictures. These group members were out at the park for eight or more hours. After this was done by these members, sometimes they were required to even um, identify their own plants on the Google document as well. So the remaining members met their required eight hours by identifying the plants um, as their part. So this was not an easy task to complete because sometimes the pictures were not the best um, and they may not have been the best because the weather may have not been favorable to that specific plant. Um, so that is not all these members did. They went out to locate plants as well. Many times people went out and all they could locate was the same plants uh, that may have already been located. Um, so let me pull up the Google document. One second. Okay. So here, I don't know if you can see that. We um, just, here's the Google document and um, it just lists all of our plants uh, with their common name, scientific name, and the trail they were found on. Um, so this is the Nodding Ladies Tresses with its scientific name Spiranthus Saruna on the Iron Bridge Trail. And so um, I'm not going to name every single one, but here is the Engelman Prickly Pear Cactus, um, Opuntia Engelmani on the Iron Bridge Trail as well. Um, so there's just several um, of the plants listed with their um, common name, scientific name, and the trail they were found on, which 
was very um, effective so that we were able to distinguish each of the plants um, in an efficient way. And these are some of the better pictures. Um, and the yellow trumpet bush and the blue blaze and the red yucca and the wand sage were several of the plants that we located at the um, the flower beds of the main building, as you can see there. Um, so there were several of those. And we got some pretty good pictures of those. And here's some more plants found on the deer run trail. We keep going. And then... Um, so we actually located the map of Lick Creek Park on the website. Um, and so that just shows all of the different trails with their names and um, just gave us a better visual of how we could locate and distinguish uh, which trail each plant was found on. And so here's our individual proof. Um, there's mine, Blaine Bozetsny, Madison Vincent, and the rest of our group members with their proof that they went to the park. Okay. And so as far as the format of the project goes, um, I honestly don't really like the format of this project because it was very difficult to know how to do things um, in a timely manner. Um, the instructions for each assignment to do with the project were very vague and um, every time just seemed like my group and I were frantically trying to figure out how and when to complete an assignment um, on time. So it is also hard to meet up with group members uh, when there's not an actual class section and especially with a group project of seven to eight members, it's, that can be pretty um, difficult for an online class. So I would suggest um, trying to completely get rid of the project for the online section, or like I said, to try to make it in those smaller groups um, of maybe like two to three, four people, because it just doesn't seem to work well with such a large group. Um, I would try to make it like the debate project of you know those smaller groups where you have more like one-on-one -on -one time with just a few group members. And so having a smaller group, like for the debate, allowed for more flexible and lenient agreement um, to meeting up and things like that. So I would say if this project has to be continued, um, I would suggest having more instructions and um, just having things prepared, you know, weeks and even months in advance um, before the project is due so that we have time um, to prepare and get the project done um, on time. Thank you.